the bell icon to turn on notifications. The ability to secure our data is very important. And therefore, permissions in SharePoint are very important. And we have briefly taken a look at the different permission groups that you can assign to other people. But let's dive in and take a closer look. So I'm currently on the home page. And if I want to take a look at my site permissions from here, all I need to do is click on the little cogwheel in the top right hand corner. From the drop down list, I'm going to select site permissions. And from here, I can then see the three different groups. We have site owners, site members, and site visitors. Now, what I'm going to do here is right at the bottom, we have an advanced permission setting. Now, I'm going to dive straight into there because this allows me to see each of my three groups in a bit more detail. And you can see in the permission levels column exactly what each group can do. So for members, they can edit, owners have full control, and visitors have read-only access. So what if we want to add a particular user to one of these groups? Well, it's very straightforward. All we need to do is open the group. So I'm going to open the members group. And then from these little options that we have running across the top, if we click the new drop down, we can add users to the group. So all I need to do now is type in the email address of the person I want to add. And I'm just going to add myself. And I can include a little message if I want to as well. Then click on share. And it's that simple. Now, what about if we want to do the reverse? What if we want to remove somebody from a group? Well, all we need to do is select that person. So I'm going to select myself up to the actions drop down. And right at the bottom here, we have a remove users from group option. Let's select it and say, OK, yes, we do want to remove this person and they're gone. Now, one thing that's extremely important to note. If you are the owner of a site, so I'm the owner of this particular SharePoint site, don't remove yourself from the owner's group. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself running into all kinds of different problems. Now, another scenario that you might have is maybe these three groups don't particularly fit the permission levels that you want to grant a specific group of people. Well, if that is the case, then you can set up your own permissions group. And we can do that from here as well. If we jump up to the permissions ribbon in the first group here, we have a little button create group and we can now go in and define the group settings. So maybe I want a specific level of permissions for everybody who works in the marketing team. So I'm going to call this marketing team. The owner, well, I'm happily going to keep that as myself. I want only the group members and the group owners to be able to view this group. And then I can choose if I'm going to allow requests to join or leave this group. And you can either choose yes or no there, depending on what you need. And then right at the bottom is the good stuff. This is where we define what level of permissions to give this group to this SharePoint site. Now in here, we do have the three defaults as well. So full control, that's normally assigned to owners of the group. Edit. That's in general what members will have. And then read is what normally gets assigned to site visitors. But then we have three additional groups in here. We have a design group and anybody who has this level of permission can view, add, update, delete, approve and customize. We have a contribute group. They can view, add, update and delete list items and documents and then a restricted view group. So this group can only view pages, list items and documents and documents can be viewed in the browser, but not downloaded. So you have three additional groups here that you could assign. So I'm going to say that the marketing team is going to be adding, updating, deleting. They might do a little bit of customization and approvals. So I'm going to set them up with a design level access. I'm now in my new permissions group called marketing team. And currently I'm the only member. And of course you can add users in exactly the same way. Just type in their email addresses and it's going to send out an email invite. So that is it. Pretty straightforward when it comes to managing your permissions and adding and removing users. So far we've been looking at site permissions. 
And one thing to remember is that these are site-wide permissions and they apply to the whole site. So when we add a user to a group, we're giving them access to the entire site. If we remove a user, we're taking away their access from the whole site. But we can also get a little bit more specific when it comes to permissions. For example, different permissions for specific libraries or lists. So let me show you an example. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go into one of the document libraries that we created towards the beginning of this course. I'm going to jump into user guides. Now, the way that permission groups kind of work in SharePoint is that the site-wide permissions are essentially the parent permissions. And then permissions to the individual libraries and lists are assigned accordingly. And unless you specify, they're going to inherit the permissions from the parent. So what if I want to give a specific group of people certain permissions to this particular document library only? Well, this is where I can set specific permissions for a document library. And I will say that this works exactly the same if you want to do this for a list. So all you need to do is go into the library jump up to the cog wheel in the top right hand corner and in the list of menu items you'll see that you have library settings if you're in a list this will say list settings so now i'm in my settings for this particular library and in the middle here we have a group called permissions and management and the second option down says permissions for this document library which pretty much sounds like we're going to find what we need in there and here we go here are my four different permission groups Remember, we have the three defaults, members, owners and visitors, and then we have the one that I just created in the previous lesson for the marketing team. If you take a look up at the permissions ribbon, you can see we have a big button there that says stop inheriting permissions. So what I can essentially do here is I can break the connection between this library and the overall site. So let's click stop inheriting permissions. I get a little warning message. It says you're about to create unique permissions for this document library. Changes made to the parent site permissions will no longer affect this document library. Well, that is exactly what I want to do. So let's click on OK. So now that I've broken that connection, it's telling me that this library now has unique permissions. And what I can do is if I want to adjust the permission levels for each of these groups for this specific library, I can do that. So maybe I want to select the marketing team and change their permission level for this library. So back up to my ribbon and I can click edit user permissions. It's telling me at the top here that this is for the marketing team. Currently they are in the design permission group, but I can now come in and maybe change them to something else. So maybe I just want them to have read access instead in this library only and click on OK. And I can carry on going and modifying permissions for any of these other groups. Just always remember that you're only changing the permissions for this specific document library. Their permissions in other parts of the site will remain the same as they were originally. And if you decide at any point that you want to re-establish the link between the document library and the overall site, you can delete unique permissions. And you can see now for marketing team, the permission level has gone back to design because it's now inheriting those permissions from the parent. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.